Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is the Xtool F1 Ultra and today I'm going to be using the deep engraving feature of this to engrave a design into a hunk of steel, so pretty cool. I've had the F1 Ultra for about a month now, and some of you have actually commented that you've seen it in the background of my videos and asking when I'm gonna do a review. I'm not gonna do a review just yet. I wanna play with it a little bit more because this thing has a lot of features and it's a little bit more complicated than just a standard fiber laser. For anyone that doesn't know, this is a 20 watt fiber laser and a 20 watt diode laser, but it also has a couple little tricks. For instance, it has a motorized head that goes up and down as you can see, but this is also controlled in software. So for the deep engraving function, it's going to use the fiber laser to etch away a surface of the metal, then step down, etch, and it can do a total of 256 of those steps, each one being 0.01 millimeters deep, so you can effectively engrave 2.56 millimeters down into various materials. And of course, since this is a fiber laser, it can do that in steel, brass, aluminum, things like that. So it allows you to basically 3D engrave into metal, and that's exactly what I want to test out today. So here's the idea. Many of my combat robot viewers will recognize this. This is Drain Damage, my 30 pound combat robot, which is intended to be just a bullet sponge. This is 30 pounds of pure S7 hate. And the idea is to engrave a logo here on the top. So this will eventually be the final application for this but I'm not gonna be using this because this is several thousand dollars and I wanna only do this once. So we need to try some things out first. So I'm gonna grab a hunk of steel and we're gonna try it on that first. I've had this piece of steel in my shop for probably like five years now. So I'm really glad that I actually get to use it for something. It's a little bit too big for this application. It's about half inch thick, so that's perfectly fine, but it's way, way too long. Of course, I could just kind of hang it over the edge, but then I don't get to fully enclose the enclosure. Then my dust collection isn't as good. And this is gonna be an extremely long operation that's gonna generate a lot of metal dust. So I wanna have this as contained as possible. In addition, I'm gonna be stripping off the paint on this because I want kind of a clean surface. The fiber laser can go right through that paint, no problem, but I really wanna see what the engraving looks like on bare metal since that's more appropriate to what I'm gonna be doing on the robot drain damage as well. So now that we have the steel prepped, it's time to do all the software stuff. Here is the image that we're going to be embossing. We need to turn this into a depth map, which will end up looking something like this. The way we do that is go into Creative Studio, do new project, wait for this to load, and then we're gonna be using their AI tools. So we click on this, you're gonna to need to be logged in here, click on emboss, and obviously you can see I've already done this, but we're gonna select a file, boom. And you notice the file said resized. You're only gonna have these three options, which is really strange, one to one, four to seven, seven to four. So what I did is I just adjusted the canvas size on the image to match this four to seven ratio, and then we can go in and crop it later. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then we want to select if we want to emboss or deboss. I want it to be like this. I want it to be debossed into it. So then we're going to hit generate. And then after some time, four minutes, um, we're going to have this file. So the file will end up looking like this. And this is a depth map. Ultimately, it tells the software that the darkest areas are going to be uh, the highest, the lightest is going to be the, actually the white is going to be the highest and the darkest is going to be the lowest. So this is what the um, depth map will end up looking like, but you can see areas here and inside the eyes. I really don't want those. So I just took this into Photoshop, modified it, and then we end up with this. So now we need to import this into the Xtool Creative space and um, do some other stuff. 
So now that we're back inside here, we can just import the image. And when you do the AI, it will ask you if you just want to import it directly into the project. You can do that as well. So here is the cleaned up version. We need to scale it. I'm just going to make it small. And then now what we need to do is go over to here and instead of process on flat surface, we're going to select emboss. And then inside here, we're going to use, oh yeah, we need to set the material. There's so many little things to do. Um, let's, let's just do the brass coin for now. I'm still learning this, so bear with me. And now we select this cool fiber laser. Awesome. 100% 300 speed. Nice 300 lines. All this looks pretty good. So I think the next thing to do is to take a picture. And I'm just going to size this relatively small. This is going to take a lot of testing. So let's, can I do, yeah, let's just do it kind of like right there. So I can get a lot of these done. And I think that's pretty much all there is to it. We can um, go ahead and frame this and I guess do a test run. So actually there's a couple things I forgot. Since we had to crop this weird, we can actually crop this here. So we go crop, and then we can actually take off this excess from that weird aspect ratio that we had to pick. Then we can go save, awesome. And now I just want to move this around just to use more of this material. The other really cool thing is we can do emboss preview. And look at that. That's actually what the debossing is going to end up looking like, which is um, pretty interesting stuff. So cool. So now we should be good to go. We can go to, I don't need to do framing since we already took a picture of it. Go to process, wait for this to do its thing. And of course, I'm gonna get the um, air filter set up and all that. And uh, this will take some time. Cool. Not really sure what all that means. Got it. Oh, is that really four, four hours? Is that real? Oh boy. Let's, yeah, let's see how that goes. So this is why we do the testing. As you can see, it's doing a full outline, and I think that's a pretty easy fix. So I'm gonna go back into the software, and you can actually edit the image and then delete out these white spaces, which effectively just kind of adds transparency in, so it should only be engraving the actual skull. I'm gonna change that, and because this is gonna take just forever, I'm gonna change the number of um, depth passes each pass is 0.01 millimeters, so at 256 is going to be 2.56. I'm going to go down to just like 100, so that'll be one millimeter deep, and I think that should be fine, and just for the test, just to see what this looks like. So I'll make those changes, and then we'll just rerun this whole thing. Once I decreased the depth and increased the speed a little bit, I think this only took a little bit over an hour, so that's not too bad. The final version is going to be much, much, much bigger, but this is just for testing. So overall, this turned out pretty good, but I'm going to do some test patterns over here. I want to kind of see if I can maybe get a little bit more contrast out of this. So I'm just going to do the speed and power test grid, and we'll see what that ends up looking like. And now I decided to hit record. So I just ran this little speed test and um, I think I need to kind of change the parameters of it. Um, yeah, let me do another one over here and I'm gonna slow it way down. So I'll do like 100 down to like 10. Um, yeah, let me do another one of these. Huh. 
I'm wondering if I'm not doing something right. Hold on. So I did a bit more manual testing as you can kind of see up here, just drew some boxes, changed some settings, nice and simple. And I found that there's a pretty big variability in the frequency. And this one right here specifically, it looks really shiny and kind of neat in person, but it's very hard to really show up in certain lighting conditions. I ended up, I think, just settling on 500 millimeters a second, which is a little bit faster, which I like, and then about 100% power. Since this is steel, we need as much power as we can get since this is only a 20 watt laser. And that ends up being about something like that. I didn't want to go too dark uh, because that's going to end up just being kind of a black mess. So let's try a full size with this setting and just kind of see what happens. For this final test, I decided to cut and sand a brand new piece of steel that was more appropriate to the dimensions of the logo. This one was 122 millimeters by 87 millimeters, so it fit really nicely on here. And I did that because this is going to be 10 hours. It was 10 hours and 15 minutes to do this engraving, and that's why I don't have a time lapse for the entirety of this. I had to do it in chunks because this was very, very long. And this is not gonna be the final size. The final size is gonna be even larger than this. So I'm expecting this to take a good 24 hours or longer. So there's a very, very slow process. What you're seeing right now is only 1.5 millimeters deep, and this can do up to two and a half millimeters deep. So this isn't even the longest that it could take. After this had been running for about three hours, I had the thought, is this gonna get too hot? Not the actual laser unit itself, but the piece of steel. We're focusing a 20 watt laser beam at a piece of steel, which is a very good heat conductor for like 10 hours. It ended up not being an issue. Uh, thankfully, the bottom of the laser of the F1 Ultra is all aluminum, so it helped kind of conduct that heat out. And I also had the exhaust fan running for the uh, metal dust that was being generated. So it was actually fine, but it kind of got me worried. Whenever you run a machine like this for the first time for you know, 10, 12, 24 hours, you start to think about all these things because there's no way possible that you can just pull up a chair, sit in front of this thing and watch it for the full 10 hours. You gotta go on about your life. So there's definitely gonna be large chunks of time where you're off doing something else, but everything ended up being just fine. And here's what it looks like after a little over 10 hours. I'm gonna do one final operation, which is gonna go through and just kind of engrave the lines just to make those pop a little bit more. So I cleaned off the dust and used some Dawn dish soap and a toothbrush to kind of clean it up. And that's what we ended up looking like. There is a lot of detail that ended up in this. Just looking at the um, depth map, I didn't really think there would be that much, but there ended up being quite a bit of depth and detail. And you can't really feel all that much. Like, I don't know if you can see that. There's not a lot of depth engraved in there but a lot of detail showed up. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. The last thing I wanted to talk about is air filtration. This is an air filtration unit that they sent along with the machine. This is made by Xtool. There's just basically a huge stack of filters in here, fan at the bottom, air comes in at the top, goes out down here. Halfway through the skull engraving, I noticed that I really wasn't getting much exhaust out of here. So I thought, hey, filter's clogged. Here is what a clean pre-filter looks like. Nice and white, pillowy, soft. Here's what one looks like after about half of the operation. Yep, it is rusty, filthy, nasty. This was halfway through. Then I replaced it and here is the second one. So this is the pre-filters that I went through doing this one test operation. That was the initial testing and the full 10 hour job. So 
This is a decent unit and it is fine for a lot of applications, but if you're doing 10 hour long, day long engravings of steel, it's gonna fill up really quickly. And this first filter stack, you can see, it's not supposed to look like that, it's supposed to look like that. These are getting spent very, very quickly. So if you're doing these long operations for deep engraving on metal, you might want to just vent outside or do some other option. So I'm really glad I did this test. I learned a lot from it. Um, I learned that the air filter is maybe inadequate for these really, really long metal engravings. For the stuff that I do with mine, you know, CO2, cutting wood, cutting acrylic, things like that, it's been perfectly fine, but you're generating a lot of dust and really fine dust with the metal engraving. So I'm gonna have to find out a different option. If I just had a large exhaust blower, like an inline blower and just exhaust it outside, maybe that would be fine. Maybe I need to find a better source for those pre-filters because those are actually the cheapest and easiest thing to replace. So maybe I just buy a big old bunch of those, cut them up and yeah, maybe you just do a pre-filter per big job. That might be something. The other thing that I've learned is the practicality of doing something like this. This is 10 hours. If you're billing for time, even at $20 an hour, which is kind of ridiculous, it's gonna be about $200 worth of just machine time, then plus the setup and everything else. You'd probably wanna be closer to 50 or 100 or maybe even 150, and then it just becomes completely impractical to bill for it. Thankfully, that's not anything I do. Um, I just kind of do all this stuff for my personal reasons, but it starts to get very cost prohibitive if you're doing this as a business. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit more in my full review of this. It absolutely works. There's nothing really wrong with the machine, but with a 20 watt laser, these jobs end up taking forever. And the final size that I'm gonna be doing is gonna be maybe two times this, one and a half times this and that is going to be in one dimension, so you're looking at maybe like four times, it's gonna be about 24 to 36 hours. That is gonna be just a massive, massive job. That is not something that you could really bill hourly for. So just something that's kind of interesting. The other thing that I've learned is their software has gotten very, very good. I am not a graphics person. I hate Photoshop. Every time I have to use Photoshop, I just absolutely hate it because I don't know it that well and their software has most things covered. Um, doing the transparencies, um, you know, editing certain portions out, cropping, all that little basic stuff. Most of the basic stuff that you're gonna be doing with your image is kind of already in there, and also the AI tool to convert to a depth map that's already in there, that is just fantastic. So I'm really, really liking the X Tool Creative Suite because it kind of takes a lot of that stuff that's annoying for me out of it. I can do SolidWorks, but I'm really not very good at Photoshop or image editing. So I like that I can do a lot of the image editing directly in the Xtool Creative Suite Creative Space. So anyways, enough rambling. Be on the lookout for more projects using the Xtool F1 Ultra, as well as my full review overview that will hopefully be coming relatively soon. As always, thanks for watching. Check the links down below. See you in the next video. Bye.